Hey there, Kurt with Eat Sleep Drive here, and this is my 981 GT4. It's a 2016 model, and I just hit 36,000 miles. And what does that mean? Well, it's time for the 36,000 mile service. Over the next couple videos, I'm gonna be doing all the things associated with that service, but this time it's all about the spark plugs. That's kind of the biggest job of this 36,000 mile service. And something I'm a little bit, um, not leery about, but a little nervous to do, because I've never done spark plugs on a mid-engine car. Just as you can imagine, being mid-engine, it's a little bit inaccessible, but I guess we're gonna find that out today. Hopefully it'll help you guys, or if you're just curious what doing spark plugs on a GT4 is like, like, uh, you're gonna find out today. Now, first and foremost, obviously you're gonna need spark plugs for this, and of course, a GT4 is the six cylinder, not the four cylinder uh, that some of the newer Caymans are. I bought these from Suncoast Parts, and a uh, big fan of those guys. I'll put a link in the description below. I buy all my uh, Porsche factory parts from them, and of course, you're gonna want the Porsche factory parts look Porsche on the box makes you feel better. You could maybe try and cross-reference these with a, like another Bosch uh, spark plug or something like that, but why chance it on your very expensive car? Uh, just spend the hundred bucks and, and get the proper spark plugs. You're gonna see that's where I buy my other parts for this 36,000 mile service in the next video. But spark plugs today. First thing we need to do, jack this thing up. Where, where is the jack point? There it is. Get to Jack. Uh, too old for this. A wheel lock. Perfect. Found it. Who's that? E. It's off. Okay, here's where things get fun. I'll show you how little room there is in here. I'm gonna try and get as best lighting as I can. You can now see the three coil packs. Uh, one on the right, just to the right of that O2 sensor. And then of course the two on the left um, that are the remaining ones. Now, it probably doesn't look too bad in the video, but let me show you like, basically you can only work in this triangle here to get through there. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do, honestly, is put some tape on my catalytic converter heat shield here so I don't cut myself. So we'll do a little bit of uh, safety. And then I'm gonna start with the easiest one and just see how this goes. Let me show you how I'm having to contort my body to get in here and this is just to remove the easiest coil plug can you see in there i'm uh just undoing this t30 torx fastener which holds the coil pack on and it is almost out i believe probably drop it into the abyss and it'll be lost forever hey there it is now I need to press on this coil pack, uh, press that button on there, and then hopefully slide this off so we can get that coil pack out. I got the harness off for this coil plug. Now I'm gonna try and pull this coil plug out. Oh, that's a satisfying noise. Check out this sweet contraption I have going on here. Multiple extensions, and I'll put a link to the uh, extension kit that I bought. I bought, I've had a bunch of 3 8 extensions, but I thought I might need more for this, this job because you really gotta obviously contort in here. So I'll put a link in the description below for these bad boys, but let's see if this uh, spark plug comes out. Whoops. All 
right, I got that first one done on the right. Now I'm gonna work on these two on the left, which has even less accessibility. Um, the camera really makes it look not too bad, honestly, but man, I have not small hands and it's super hard to get back here. Super fiddly, I keep dropping this T30 fastener to get the bolt off of the coil pack. Uh, but what I am gonna do right now to maybe offer me a little more room and visibility is take this little um, guard off, this little fender liner off, which only a couple fasteners and, you know, worst, worst case it does nothing, but best case it gives me a little more room. So let's take this off. This is the contraption I used to take out the fastener that is used to hold in the coil pack, which is this guy, little T30. Number two, well, not the number two cylinder, but the second one I'm doing, potentially coming out. It's just so hard, as you can see, to fit your hand in here and like, There we go. Boom. Number two. So this is the part where ideally you would use a torque wrench, put these two 24 pound feet. That is the uh, official torque spec. But, you know, doing this on a, a bunch of extensions and swivels, you're not gonna get an accurate torque spec. Um, so these, these spark plugs are about like the you know there's a lot of spark plugs they have these crush washers and basically you want to go uh, hand tight and then just under 90 degrees um, obviously if it doesn't feel good don't do it uh, if you're not if you haven't done spark plugs before don't attempt this job um, it's obviously like a feel game ideally you get the torque wrench on but it's not going to be super accurate now if you want to feel good about it you can put your torque wrench on hard to say how accurate that is being <laughs> looking at this contraption but good and tight will work the third and final spark plug on this side which of course is the one that is the most forward is probably the hardest to get to and of course there's really no trick to it just like the other ones you kind of just fiddle around with a bunch of different extensions and body positioning to get it done but take your time you'll eventually get it you might just bruise your knuckles a little bit. All right, by some miracle, I've been able to do all three of these. Finally, it is super fiddly, but don't forget to take that tape off of your cat. Otherwise, you're going to have horrible smells and any other potential lights or something that you had over here. I'm going to put this thing back on here fender liner and then we're gonna switch to the other side Now I was told that this side would be harder, the passenger side. Uh, I'm not gonna jinx myself and say it looks easier now, but time will tell as to whether or not that is the case. But I am looking forward to being halfway done and we'll get these out and then I'll give you guys all the tips of basically what would make this job go a lot quicker next time.
Number five coil coming out. Boom. All three of these guys. All right, now it's safe to say that the passenger side was actually easier than the driver's side. I could have swore people online said the opposite, but uh, this side was actually really not bad. Or it was maybe a combination of I just got better at it. Uh, either way, we are fortunate to be done. All right, here's all six spark plugs. And as you can see, they're in pretty decent shape. There's no oil on these threads or anything like that. So fortunately there's no oil leaks or anything in the engine. So that's good. But I am glad that we did this job after 36,000 miles. So tips for doing this job after I've just done it. It took me about three hours, give or take, um, but I am filming, so it's, it's kind of hard to judge. If I would do this job again, I could get it done way faster. Uh, it's just one of those jobs where it's, it, it's very fiddly. It's not difficult, but it's very fiddly and you have to take your time. And obviously you don't want to mess this up, so you have to do it right. Uh, so take your time. Personally, if knowing what I know now, I prefer to have started on the passenger side first since it is easier and you kind of will get in a rhythm of doing it there's a little more access over here and then move to the to the driver's side um, that's my first tip number one uh, number two definitely make sure you remove those splash shields uh, they do provide a little bit of extra room to get in there this would be a little bit easier on a lift just because of the way the way you'd have access laying on the ground and, and being in weird positions is not ideal uh, No surprise working on the ground is never really very fun And then I'll show you guys some of my tools that I use down here some things that I recommend in your spark plug socket You know, there's a lot of sockets that are specific for spark plugs and they typically have like a rubber grommet in there just take that thing out uh, because when you have that rubber grommet, it holds the spark plug when you put the new one in. And then when you try and pull out your contraption of 5,000 different extensions, they're gonna come apart. And then it's just like really hard to get out. So you don't need that little rubber. You could just use a regular socket uh, to get those spark plugs in. That's another really good tip. It will save you time. It saved me, uh, it would have saved me a lot of time knowing that. And then, um, yeah, you're gonna need a swivel joint, uh, and a quarter inch, three quarter, uh, three eighths inch, uh, and, and a load of extensions. I'll put some links in the description below for things that help me. And then last but not least, this little um, socket that I had a T30 Torx bit on. I taped it just so things don't fall, fall down. So use all those tips. It will make it way easier for you. Take your time. It's a doable job. It's just, just know that it's a pain, uh, but the, it is very expensive to get this done from the dealer. So, you know, a afternoon or a morning and uh, you're done with this job and you save yourself, you know, 1500 bucks or something like that. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Eat, sleep, drive TV on Instagram. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Next week, we'll be doing the rest of the 36,000 mile service and hopefully it will be a little bit easier than this. See you guys.